Hi, I'm Lila Timms, one of the authors of Subarani, the new Latin reading course by Hands Up Education. Subarani is a beginner's Latin course which follows the lives of a diverse group of characters from the Subura in Rome. This set of ordinary people will have extraordinary adventures, taking them across the empire from Britain to North Africa during the reign of Nero. Today, I'm speaking with Hilary Long. Hilary is a teacher in Austin, Texas, and she is the author of a new Latin novella with the dog Keller, famous from Subarani, as its protagonist. Hilary studied classics at the University of Cambridge and now lives with her family in Texas Hill County, where she teaches at St. Andrew's Episcopal School. Hi, Hilary, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and being here to tell us all about Keller, the forthcoming Latin novella. Um, I'm very excited. I've read it, so my excitement is justified because I, I know all about the story of the lovable dog in the Sabura. Um, and thank you for giving up your Sunday afternoon to tell everybody a little bit more about it. No, thank you for working uh, at late at night on a Sunday in England. That's right, yes. Whereas in Austin, Texas, it's about two in the afternoon. Yeah, here it's... <laughs> okay yeah no it's cold here cold and dark <laughs> in Cambridge UK <laughs> so um to start us off what is Keller Hillary and how did you come to write it so I fell in love with Keller when I read even just the the first and second chapter of, of Subarani um and he just seemed like this big licky enthusiastic dog that um, was just big hearted as well as big in stature. And as to how I came to write it, gosh, there's such a long story there. I went to work at a school which teaches using the comprehensible input method. And part of that is novellas. And when I saw my first novellas, I was like, oh, they're so bright and so fun and so colorful. These are awesome. And it just made total sense to me that um, Latin students should have access to a wide choice of Latin reading material that met them wherever they were in their Latin journey and um, just gave them this opportunity to further engage with the Romans and also at the same time to improve their reading fluency. And I just thought, I really wanna be a part of this. And so naturally you picked up your pen and out came <laughs> this story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I picked up my quill and yeah. <laughs> Papyrus scroll. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at what point is this novel kind of set at? So what reading level do students need to be to access this roughly? What kind of students is it suitable I, for? Yeah, I deliberately wrote it with my own students in mind, thinking that I wanted them to be able to start reading for pleasure and for fun very early on in their Subarani experience. So it's deliberately written at, at a point where it pitches to kiddos who have read probably the first three chapters of Subarani, um, but also you know anybody who's not foolishly using Subarani, you could also access it um, from maybe let's say the first two months of, of a beginning Latin course. Okay, so like students who really maybe haven't done much Latin at all should be able to pick this up and, and read it themselves or read it with a bit of help, oh. read it over a long period of time or just pick it up and read it quite quickly. I think the answer to that is just yes. I think it can be whatever you need it all to be. That. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, and so how did when you wrote it with your students in mind did you think they would be reading this by themselves in the back of your classroom maybe or taking it <laughs> home have you got an idea of how they might well, use it I guess that because I I enjoy I enjoyed the book <laughs> and I think that my students would get a kick out of it too I would selfishly want to read it with them so that I could enjoy their enjoyment of the book so um having been on zoom for a long time now, as so many of us have, I'm so familiar with the kids' pets that they have at home that always make their way into Zooms. So um, I felt that many of the kids that I had taught over the last nine months had had dogs in particular that just always came to the Zooms. And I thought, oh, these kids are gonna love and totally identify with the antics of Keller. 
So yeah, I definitely want to read it with them. Although a lot of people use novellas um, as a free voluntary read at the beginning of class or a warm up or as a special project. It's kind of, it's very, um, it's very diverse, the different ways that you can use a novella. And I think that there's no wrong way, which is a good thing. That is a good thing. <laughs> so how did you get interested in novellas then? Did you, have you been doing some of these with your students or did you pick this up yourself? Um, I think that when I first came to this school, um, they gave me a lot of training in CI and we went to a very big conference in Florida that was all for language teachers. And I went, attended several sessions that were about novellas. And then the combination of that kind of churning away in the back of my mind. And then last summer, I got a wonderful gift certificate or book certificate um, from a student. And I had at the same time, serendipitously seen on Facebook because I belong to a lot of um, different Latin teacher Facebook pages that they, there was a, an awful lot of, um, or there were an awful lot of new books, novellas that were coming out maybe as a result of COVID because people had a little bit more time to, to write because they were stuck at home. And I actually bought like 20 and if you'll forgive me stretching over here, um, I, I literally went and bought every single thing that I could lay my hands on to read. And I thought, oh, I really would love to have a go at this because I was so inspired by the new stories and the characters and situations in Subarani. I just thought how intriguing it was that there were all these characters who obviously had fantastic backstories. So, yeah. <laughs> So then um, you started writing, but there, it, it was quite a specific process, I guess, because um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how the language that you've used has been selected quite carefully and what the kind of pedagogical background to the way these books are crafted is. Right. I can't speak for how other people do it because I'm actually not too sure, but I know that I sat down literally on this very same couch and um, just drafted as much of a story as I could about this dog who had friends all over the city of Rome and, and I just wrote whatever I felt like writing. And then I went back and read through the first three chapters of Subarani, knowing that that's kind of the level of Latin I wanted to be using and tried to use the same structures, you know, nominative and accusative, singular and plural, um, very simple structures, nominative, accusative verb, everything's present tense unless it's glossed. Um, and I think that I think obviously with novellas, if you were to just stick with those structures, it would be a kind of dull book. Um, but I added in other structures that the kids wouldn't have met yet, like wallow and possum. But if I sheltered it at the bottom of the page or glossed it at the bottom of the page, just as a vocab item, then it's easy for students to be able to look at those words and they don't think, oh my gosh, I don't know what that means. They're able to go, oh yeah, that's what it means. And they just move on within the structure. So you can say a few more interesting and advanced things, which in turn, I think plants that seed for when they do meet them later on in the text that they're able to go, I've seen that before, now where did I see that? And that's all for the good. And foreshadowing things to come. Foreshadowing, yes. So if students are like used to working with a Subarani textbook, then would you say there'll be quite a smooth transition in terms of things like the subject matter, obviously, they'll know color, um, and the vocabulary as well, and most of the language structures, but then they'll be stretched in some other ways. Is that about? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And I think that the beauty of a novella is that it's simple and attainable, but the very idea that you can stretch a little, but it feels safe. It doesn't feel threatening. I mean, you've got the vocabulary sheltered. There's a dictionary in the back of the book if you want to use the dictionary, but you're not constantly flipping to the back of the book and getting frustrated because you don't understand the structures or the vocabulary. Yeah, and the vocabulary is particularly um, a pretty narrow range of words, isn't it? Yes. To make it as accessible as possible. Right, and, and using cognates and, and proper nouns frequently so that you don't feel like the word count is just getting so high with new words that you don't know that it's confusing. Yeah, now, I, I worked on the Sabarani stories and we're forever working out how to you know, not introduce too much vocab in one go. So the fact that you've written a book that I think has 124 head words, that's it. And a, lo a large number of those are Subarani words or are words that they can guess because their proper names are cognates, I think is, is quite impressive really to write an actual story that 
takes up what is it 32 pages right. and it uses very few words is is very yeah it's a very powerful tool isn't it to let them read something that is accessible and yeah and you bring up the 32 pages and I think that well I'm like wow 32 pages <laughs> that's oh but that's actually a lot of that is glossary <laughs> <laughs> Some of it is glossary, and and then of course the fantastic images. I think that's another thing of novellas is is making sure that there are lots of images, lots of pictures that help convey the meaning of what's going on in the text, and um, are also just a really cheerful part of the story, and it's supposed to bring pleasure into light. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> I definitely think it looks like it'll be. It's inviting to read from the way it looks. I think because oh, of the. Definitely the illustrations and the fact that there's not too much text on each page and, and it is thin enough that you think oh this is not gonna you know take me weeks to read I can right. I can do this yes yeah. exactly so I think all of that is very true Keller he's a dog a dog who lives in the Sabura um and goes around Rome What's he like? What's life like for Keller in the city of Rome? Well, I think at first, I've, my initial take on Keller was how different life must be for him, because this is obviously a British dog that is feeling a little bit like a, to use a different metaphor, a fish out of water, a dog out of water. Um, he's not in Britannia anymore. He is not in um, a rural setting any longer. And I think at first it must have been extremely exciting. Uh, all those smells and sounds and everything just being brilliant. Um, but then I thought, gosh, he must have been homesick. So then I kind of made him into a rather gloomy dog because I made him kind of too homesick and wishing he was in Britain. Um, so his final incarnation in Keller is as a dog who is adapting to his new life and to his new role. He's kind of not living in the country anymore. So he has to show a little bit more sophistication in the country in Britain. There was nobody who really cared too much how he behaved, um, that he was pretty much able to do whatever he needed to do. He was a hunting dog. He was a big, slobbery, dirty, barky, messy kind of dog. But now in Rome, he's living in the Sabura. It's crowded. Um, admittedly, it is noisy, but hey, who wants anybody oh, else dirty. adding to that noise? And so he's constantly hearing, don't you do this, don't you do that, don't do the other. And he's like, oh man, lovely, lovely. I need to go someplace where I can be what I was, a dog. <laughs> Now, Hilary, this is an aside, but um, you yourself are a British expat, aren't you? Living in a different country. Did you did you identify with this dog? I bit? most definitely identified with the dog, I think. <laughs> it's embarrassing to say. My own dog is not in here right now because otherwise she would be right up here in our chops. But um, yeah, I, I definitely understand how I felt at times. <laughs> Although I don't think I'm quite as messy. Although my family may disagree. Now, is this maybe the first novella and there are going to be more, Hilary? Have, have you picked up the pen and got a passion for it and they <laughs> rolling out of you? Or are you yes. thinking I'm going to rest on my laurels for a bit? And <laughs> No, there is no time to rest on your laurels. Um, um, over the summer, it was obviously a very dull summer and um, I really got into the writing bug. I actually wrote four novellas, which are fan fiction of Subarani over the summer. And um, the next one should be coming out not too distant future. It's actually ready to roll. It's about Sabina and Julia and their antics on a Dies Festus in the Subura and all the different games that they can play, um, which was actually um, almost inspired by the children I teach because we do a lot of brain breaks or games in our classroom and knowing how much children love games. It was just a fun thing to be able to kind of put that world together with the novella world um, because these are games that the students will actually be able to play themselves once COVID is over and they can kind of get back together again. Yes. <laughs> so that's in the works. And um, I also have one about Julia coming up and how she's a sifonaria, firefighter. And the last one is about Alexander and Sabina, but I don't want to talk too much about that one because it might be a spoiler alert for people who haven't got that far in Subarani. Yeah, okay, got it. Gotcha. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, we're really pleased. I think as speaking as one of the people at Hands Up Education, you know, when we set up our community interest company, one of the things we really cared about a lot was that um, it wasn't going to be us writing stuff, but we really wanted to bring together this really big, really passionate community of teachers who were all, you know, building beautiful resources and it's really exciting to be able to have your novella be the, the first little endeavor in that direction that we can publish that is entirely yours but feeds into what we're doing and will hopefully reach lots of people who are interested in picking up different ways of teaching so this is entirely what hands up is about and we're so pleased that um you and so many other teachers who are sharing so many brilliant resources online with each other so freely are all able to help each other out and, and spread the word and increase the amount of stuff that's available for latin teaching so thank absolutely. you absolutely yeah um, excellent I'll sign off here and um, look forward to hearing from everybody who's listened to this video and if you've got any thoughts for Hillary or for us we'll um, share how you can get in touch with us and particularly also where you can find the novella Kelle for sale if you'd like to buy your own copy. So thank you very much Hillary, and um, we'll talk soon. <laughs> You're welcome, take care, bye bye.